It is now time for our member statements. The member from Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise in the House today to recognize the many constituents in my riding of Bruce Gray, Owen Sound, who will be marking this week the 125th anniversary of the birthday of Agnes Campbell McPhail. As, as some members may know, Agnes McPhail was born on March 24, 1890, in Prochen Township in Gray County, known today as Agnes McPhail Country. Agnes and her family lived in a three room log cabin on a 100 acre farm near Hopeville. Sometime later, the McPhails moved to Artemisia Township, which is also in my riding, and where Agnes later worked as a school teacher. As my constituents and those around Ontario gather to honour Agnes's birth, they will celebrate her life accomplishments that helped to shape our history, such as being the first Canadian woman elected to the House of Commons in Ottawa in 1921 as a member of the Progressive Party of Canada for the Grey Southeast Riding. She was re elected in the 1925, 26, and 1930 federal elections during her 19 year run as an MP. In 1929, Agnes was a delegate at the League of Nations in Geneva and was the first Canadian woman to do so. There, she was a member of the World Disarmament Committee. She was also the first of two women to be elected to this House in 1943 as a member of the Ontario CCF representing the Toronto riding of York East, known today as Beaches East York. It was during her run as an MPP that Agnes made her finest legislative mark, championing equal work for Ontario women. When not serving her constituents in public office, the fearless and tireless Agnes dedicated her time to championing for equal rights and fair treatment for everyone. MacPhail's progressive views also led her advocacy for women in the criminal justice system that helped her to found the Elizabeth Fry Society of Canada in 1939. She also worked as an agricultural columnist for the Globe and Mail in Toronto. As we gathered on the 125th anniversary of Agnes's birth, we are reminded how this fearless and outspoken native of Grey County continues to inspire us and to make us proud. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. For the member's statement, the member from Essex. Thank you very much, Speaker. Pleased to bring attention uh, about a wonderful event that's going to be happening in uh, Windsor and Essex County. It's uh, the first Robotics 2015 Windsor Essex Great Lake Regional Competition, uh, set for April the 2nd at the University of Windsor, Windsor St. Dennis Centre. Uh, an article from Dave Waddell at the Windsor Star from March 25th that highlights some of the great things that are going to be happening. 50 teams attending the second annual event are charged with developing robots to improve recycling and reuse of natural resource. It requires team building, creativity, critical thinking, and the ability to raise about ten to fifteen thousand dollars on average that it costs the local teams to create the robot. Uh, the competition is essentially starting up a company, uh, and you need accountants, businesses, students graphic artists, web designers, and communications people, as much as technical people in design. It's largely an industry-driven event, said Ira Kuzmirchuk, uh, who is the director of robotics and youth programs uh, for WeTech Alliance. I want to give a shout out to him. He's a great promoter. Companies are also backing the effort in this event uh, with the financial support. Valiant, which is a tool company in Windsor, large tool manufacturer, uh, has paid $50,000 to be the event's platinum sponsors, while local uh, sponsors such as Centerline, Siemens, and St. Clair College are also chipping in. Uh, the the event will include 10 or more teams than it did a year ago. Teams are composed of up to 30 members and a mentor from the industry. The best way to describe the atmosphere, Speaker, is that it's part NASA, part NASCAR, and part Super Bowl with a little rock and roll mixed in. Speaker, I can't wait to go and check this out. Sounds like a wonderful initiative, but it certainly is uh, great for our, our region. I commend all those who will be participating. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stavitz, the member from Ottawa, Orléans. Mr. President, thank you very much, and I'm pleased to share that last Thursday my office hosted our first free community movie night for 250 of my constituents. This was at the suggestion of some of my caucus colleagues, so thank you very much. The event was a grand success with an overwhelming interest based on the fact that many local schools kindly passed the information to the parents in the community. The event took place at a local movie theater right, with my cons right by my constituency office, and the movie we played was Big Hero 6. And that movie, I must say, won the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature, and I can attest as well that it was a great movie for those of all ages. I was also an absolute pleasure to meet so many young families from Orléans who were in town for March break and hopefully enjoyed the event. Je suis très emballée à l'idée de revivre cette expérience dans le futur. L'accueil I am absolutely excited to relive this experience um, next time. This activity really enabled a lot of families in my riding of Ottawa Orleans to come together and be entertained for free. Experience a seasonal event. Thank you, Monsieur le Président. Merci. 
Thank you, Member Simmons, the member from Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on March 11th, Tom Kansas, Director of the Ministry of the Environment and Climate Change's Environmental Innovations Branch, and Luz Flippe travelled to Blythe, home to my constituency office in Huron, to present Murray and Wilma Scott with the Minister's Award for Environmental Excellence. The Scots were one of nine recipients across Ontario who demonstrated strong commitment to environmental excellence. Recipients collaborated with schools, industry leaders, and volunteers to restore wildlife habitat conserve water and energy, and prevent pollutants and nutrients from entering our Great Lakes. Over the past decade, the Scots have undertaken a number of environmental projects working closely with the Maitland Valley Conservation Authority. Murray and Wilma controlled their farm's nutrient and sediment runoff through erosion control berms, new wetlands, and a natural channel design. I'm particularly happy about the recognition the Scott family received. You see, Speaker, I know the farm very well. I grew up with Scott twins, Maribeth and Melanie. I attended many events at their farm as we grew up, and I even picked stones. Murray was my 4-H calf club leader, and everyone from home will understand when I say, with her creative ways, Wilma inspired my own Christmas spirit. Murray also gave back to the community through the years as a municipal councillor for East Wamanosh and subsequently as deputy mayor for North Huron. I would like to sincerely congratulate Murray and Wilma for their environmental excellence and for leading by example. And I would also like to share with them and know by this statement that had I known and been invited to this presentation, I would have done everything in my power to attend. Thank you very much. Thank you, Member Stevenson, Member from Toronto, Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I rise to acknowledge the excellent work done by the Toronto Intergenerational Partnerships and Community, TIGP, uh, based in my riding. Uh, they are pushing to have Intergenerational Day Canada recognized across the country. Uh, this year, the City of Toronto is going to be joining many cities as it proclaims June 1st Intergenerational Day Canada. Intergenerational Day Canada, June 1st, provides an opportunity to raise awareness in daily life of the many benefits that simple and respectful connections between generations bring to education, health, and community safety. TIGP in my riding has been successful in bringing together seniors and high school students uh, for social events, for award ceremonies. It's made life much richer for our seniors and for teenagers, an opportunity to become involved in the community to help people who could well be their grandparents. Stereotypes of both younger and older people are broken down when they learn about each other. Isolation is diminished, and empathy grows in both directions. Intergenerational Day Canada makes a powerful statement about the value of generational connecting within each and everyone's neighbourhood, and I will be introducing a bill this afternoon, Speaker, to have this legislature also proclaim June 1st as Intergenerational Day Canada. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stevens, and from Scarborough, Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today to recognize Greek Independence Day. Greek independence was first declared on March 25, 1821. Celebrating this year, this day each year is a wonderful opportunity to recognize Greeks' many contributions to the world. After all, this is the country that gave us democracy and the Olympic Games. It is also perfect time to celebrate significant contributions that the Ontario's vibrant Greek community has made to our province. And to my riding of Scarborough Agent Court, I'm proud to have constituents who are prominent members of the Greek community, including authors, educators, physicians, and other professionals. This Sunday, March 29th, I will participate in the annual parade through the Toronto's Greek town, as I've done every year for over 20 years. Years, Mr. Speaker. Participating in the parade each year brings back many wonderful childhood memories. Having grown up in the riding of Toronto Danforth, I remember being fascinated by the Greek culture on the Danforth, a street with so much cultural and economic significance to our province. Cultural diversity is what makes Ontario such a great place to live, work and to play. As we celebrate Greek Independence Day and its history, we also celebrate what makes Ontario so great. Sito Ella. Sitter to Ontario, Sitter to Canada. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well done. Speaker, today I am happy to rise uh, to inform those uh, of a significant event happening in my riding, the Elmira Maple Syrup Festival, oh, happening yeah. this weekend in Elmira, Ontario. As many know, the Elmira Maple Syrup Festival is the largest of its kind, and this year Sweet. they are celebrating 
their 51st anniversary. Many events are planned, including a magic show, food truck festival, and cooking demos from celebrity chefs. Going to Elmira is a tradition for my family, as we always kick off springtime with a trip to the festival. We don't hesitate to try all the exciting foods, activities, and events featured in Elmira during uh, this, this Saturday. Of course, this event wouldn't continue to thrive without the tireless work of more than 2,000 dedicated volunteers to make this event possible each and every year. They do everything from directing traffic to providing sugar bush tours to running games and activities for thousands of excited participants. Their selfless efforts are the reason people from my community and across the world travel to the township of Woolwich for this important festival. So I would like to thank or take this time to thank all the dedicated volunteers of the Elmira Maple Surf Festival. Now, Speaker, on a final note, I also want to issue a warning to our rival Mother Flippers team. Big pancake challenge happening on Saturday morning. I encourage everybody to, to participate. Flippers. I know that uh, Ms. Fife, uh, the member from Kitchener Waterloo, will have a team in as well. My team, the Batter Kings, have been practicing, and we look forward to Saturday's pancake flipping match. Go Thank Batter you, Kings! Speaker. Go Batter Kings! That's you. The, the, uh, the heckles write themselves, so. <laughs> Thank you, member's team is a member from Halton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this past Saturday, Ontarians across the province joined together with the rest of the global community to mark the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. This day is important to me and countless people around the world. First proclaimed by the UN General Assembly in 1966, the day was originally established to commemorate the 1960 Sharpeville Massacre a terrible day when 69 people were killed in South Africa after police opened fire on a peaceful demonstration against apartheid pass laws. I was born in South Africa, and I remember well the stories my parents told me about this horrific event. As someone who witnessed and experienced the devastating impacts of racial discrimination, this day is a powerful reminder of why my family chose to come to Canada to start a new life. A life where acceptance of everyone, regardless of race, religion, or background, is celebrated. This day is a reminder of where we have been and where we are going to go. There is a lot more work to do. It encourages us all to remain committed to work together to end racial discrimination in all its forms, to renew our commitment to building a world of justice, equality, and dignity. Speaker, Ontario's diversity is our strength. When we work together, free from inequality and injustice, we are all stronger. We all win. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member Stavis, the member from Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. On Friday, last Friday, 13th of March, I had the pleasure of attending the grand opening ribbon-cutting ceremony for the new food land and air North Dumfries in my riding of Cambridge, along with many of the constituents from the community. There's been a great deal of build-up over the last few months for the opening of Foodland. Residents of North Dumfries have been awaiting the first grocery store open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They've also hired 100 new employees. Wow. This new grocery store will provide newfound convenience for my constituents. The store that preceded the new Air Foodland was too small and the hours too limited to keep up with the demand. As I browsed around the store, I noted the wide selection of ready-made meals and great organic section. This provides my constituents better and healthier options for themselves as well as their families. It was wonderful to attend the opening and to st stand next to a very sometimes emotional owner, Todd Bender, and his family in order to cut the ribbon to officially open the store. We also had a band backing up the ribbon cutting to great fanfare. It was a momentous occasion for Todd, a huge accomplishment and a major addition to my riding of Cambridge. And Speaker, I wanted to note that I stopped by the store again this past Sunday to shop for dinner for my family before heading back to Toronto. As I pulled in, I was struck by how full the parking lot was on a Sunday evening. Many that we're visiting uh, with each other in the parking lot. The Air Food Land is certainly filling a, de a demand and will be a success story in our community of Cambridge. Thank you. Okay. I thank all members for their statements. I beg